Pre-trib rapture moment number nine. We're going to talk now about this little Hollywood film called Rapture Palooza. Now, if you haven't heard about this or haven't seen it, what it is basically is a bunch of little fornicating drug addicts out there, um, Hollywood stars, and they've taken it upon themselves and their producer and things, they've taken it upon themselves to mock the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture, as well as the events of the book of Revelation. And they have no fear at all of blaspheming the Lord and mocking the Bible. Kind of interesting because they won't do it with Islam or with Buddhism or any other thing out there. They only do it with the Bible, Bible-believing Christians. Hmm, very strange. But they make the they make fun of the books or the events of the Book of Revelation, and you know, you know they they they're laughing about it and stuff, acting like they would just be like, oh, this is uncool, you know. Oh. But when the real thing happens and they're here for it, they're not going to think it's so cool. These little effeminate fornicators, you know, that are out there in Hollywood, they are by Bible definition they are harlots. A harlot is somebody that sells their body for money. That's what all Hollywood actors are. They're all harlots. Okay? And, you know, if you don't know what that means, the modern PC term would be prostitute. But the Bible, King James Bible word is harlot. Okay? Or whore. You know, that's what the Bible word is. That's what these actors are. All right? And, but what are the two purposes of this film? First of all, you have them mocking the truth and preparing people for the real thing. All right? A good way to get people prepared for the impact of the actual rapture is to talk about it and bring out the truth on it. But then spin it, put your twist on it, and say, oh, oh ha, 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 it's funny. It's a real big funny thing. See, that's what they're doing. The Bible talks about fools making a mock at sin. And that's what Hollywood celebrities do. They mock sin. But I guarantee you, when the real thing hits, these little effeminate people out there that live in their nice little mansions and they have to have their food cooked a certain way and they just, you know, I remember hearing one Hollywood harlot the one time she said she doesn't like to sweat. Well, guess what? You're going to be doing all that stuff and more in the time of Jacob's trouble. But have your laugh now. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and mock what the Bible says is coming. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 2 says, He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. I'm not worried about the time of Jacob's trouble. These things that they show and that they mock in the movie, I'm not worried about going through it. Why? Because I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm leaving. And then you can have your earth and you can have your fun little times and whatever else. If you want to stay here, you want to reject Jesus Christ and go through the time of Jacob's trouble and see how tough you are, go ahead. Me and the people that are saved, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we're leaving. Bye-bye. The world is yours. You'll be rid of us, finally. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 5 says, A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scorner seeketh wisdom, and findeth it not. But knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man. Don't bother wasting your time going to the movie and trying to debunk it or whatever. Just go from the presence of a foolish man. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge... The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Hey, Hollywood celebrity, and you people out there that like the movie and that think it's funny and you're mocking the pre-tribulation rapture, you think that your way is right. But the end thereof are the ways of death. You are a fool to think that you're going to be able to stand against the wrath of God Almighty for seven years and think that you're going to survive the thing. The Bible says that half the world's population, over half the world's population, is going to be killed in that time period. But you're going to make it somehow. These little Hollywood harlots out there that are have to have everything done for them and stuff, they're going to somehow make it through the worst time period that's ever going to hit the earth? 
Are you kidding me? They'll be lucky to make it a year, the first year. Now, I know they're going to take the mark of the beast and they'll go in with the whole system and everything else. They'll be worshiping the Antichrist, but they're not going to make it. And let me tell you something. Another thing that's very, very important to understand is not only are you going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, but you're also going to have God's special mark, His special wrath upon you. The Bible says the wrath of God abideth on the children of disobedience. You want to mock Jesus Christ? You want to mock this book right here? The Word of God? You want to mock Christians? Bible-believing Christians? Us Bible thumpers, you know? You want to mock us? See what God does to you. Now, if they're ignorant, maybe God will have a little bit of mercy on them or something like that. But the fact is, God's wrath abides on the children of disobedience. You better watch your mouth. You better be careful. And you say, well, you know, maybe they'll come to the knowledge of the truth after the rapture actually does happen. Let's see about that. Let's see what the real motivation is here behind this movie, this rapture Palooza movie. Revelation chapter 9, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands and they sh that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. Why do the Hollywood celebrities, why do they go out there, why do these little harlots go out there and sell themselves for idols of gold and silver, brass, stone, wood? They talk about their big mansions. They talk about look, the lifestyles of the rich and famous, you know. Hollywood, what is it called? Hollywood digs or something like this, I heard one time. You know, they talk about their big mansions that they have. They have idols. That's why they're doing this. And they're doing it for the excitement of fornication. It's all a big funny joke. And when you go into that time period, these little wicked people that did this film, they're not going to repent of these evil things that they have grown to worship. So what do I say? I say let the Hollywood celebrities mock the Bible. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, we'll see what happens here. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. 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 Did you get that? Great, like celebrities? Stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Congratulations. That's your eternity if you are one of these people in this film. Or if you think it's funny. If you're getting a good laugh about this video, go ahead, laugh. We're going to see you. I'm going to get to see every single Hollywood celebrity that's ever lived. I'm going to be up there standing at the right hand of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior. I'm going to be up there with all the other saints. And we're going to stand there and we're going to look down at you and we're going to see you and your shame before you're cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. And then we're going to see who's mocking. The Bible says God will mock when their terror comes, when their fear comes upon them. God's actually going to mock you. So go ahead, laugh now. Mark chapter 8, verses 36 through 38. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Let me tell you something. There ain't enough money, there ain't enough fame, there aren't enough pretty girls, whatever else on this planet to turn me against this King James Bible. It isn't going to happen. And let me tell you, now I want to give a little rebuke to the Christians out there, the people that call themselves Christians. If you laugh about this movie, 
if you can watch that thing and you can go, ha, 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 and you get a good giggle out of it, and it doesn't infuriate you, and it doesn't make you angry, you need to check yourself whether you're even saved. No Christian could watch their Savior, Jesus Christ, being blasphemed and get a laugh at it. And I guarantee you there are professing Christians out there that will go to that vile movie and get a laugh about it. Why? Because they're lost. They've received not the love of the truth. Therefore God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned. You better be careful. And this Rapture Palooza movie, you watch the lives of all these little harlots that are in that film. Watch them. This what was it named Heath Radcliffe or something like this or some kind of guy he was a sodomite in this broken back mountain or something like that portraying himself as a sodomite what happened they found him dead in his apartment you better be careful you go back to the Roman Catholic Inquisition a lot of those Roman Catholic torture masters that were torturing Christians you know what happened to them they died horrible deaths be not deceived God is not mocked 